Now you can start. We don't always drink and shoot videos, but when we do, we do responsibly. This is, uh, you know, the rut. And that means right now we're shooting this video at oh, 5.44 Central Time. And that means Dylan came from Iowa. I did errands all day, brought a deer in, had to uh, drop another deer off the taxidermist. And it's just, it's the rut. And there's a lot going on. And uh, I think sometimes we get into this point, you just want to go. Even a trail camera might say, wow, that buck was there at 1130. It's a hot day. It's a bad day. And you think, man, I got to get out there. And you get burned out. You know, by now it's, uh, I think, November 9th. Uh, you even lose track of the dates. But it's... Uh, it's getting well into the rut where we're at. We've You could look at bucks that have been ruddy at least um, and doing well since October 20th, October 22nd, 23rd. And so that's time you're wore out and I think we lose sight of the, some of the strategy. And there's a lot of strategy be, that can be applied to the entire rut, not just the peak rut of nine days, like around here, um, Southeast Minnesota, Southwest Wisconsin, in this area. And you could drag that all the way over to Michigan, over into New York, even into the Northeast. Um, even down into northern Illinois, Ohio, portions of Iowa. But you look at this period of time from the 5th, 6th, 2nd of November, 8th, all the way through the 15th, 18th, peak rut in most areas we talk about. And uh, and then when you get down south, boy, it depends on the individual does. It can be bred over a four-month period sometimes. It's a little bit different down there, but at least down into Arkansas, Tennessee, West Virginia, Oklahoma, in, in a line like that in north, you can get into some consistent rutting. Bottom line is you have the peak rut. And whatever state you're in, you get burned out. You forget about strategy. You just go sit in a stand, hoping you're going to see that same buck that went by there the day before, two days ago, made that rub, made that scrape. And there's a lot of strategy can be applied. Part of that stand management. You know, we talk about, we'll get down here, uh, hunt every day, best days, hunt where, what sits. And, and you can really burn out your stands. I think there's a lot of good strategy that can come from, uh, stand management. I'll, I'll give you a point. Uh, my buddy Carl that I hunted with for many years. In fact, his dad was out here visiting. His dad's 82. He was here last week and comes up and hunts public land around here still. It's crazy. Crazy guy. Um, but anyways, Carl and I would hunt about the same amount of time in Wisconsin. And over that amount of time, um, let's say it's 12 years, I think, uh, Carl shot nine, nine bucks and that was on our eight bucks and those eight bucks he shot on two different stands seven of the bucks he shot on out of uh one stand and then one out of the other and he would hunt he would just really hit those stands over and over again the same one during that same time i shot approximately twice as many bucks and it was 17 different bucks and used 14 different stands and so i was always looking for for the next freshest stand, the next freshest stand with sign on. Uh, my buddy Mike's here from Michigan hunting this week in Minnesota for our gun season. It's during the rut though. And this is his fifth sit and he's sat in a different stand every time. I, I'm skipping around. Um, and it's not to say that there's a certain stand. I just wanna, I want him to maintain the freshness of the property and the integrity of the property. And so very important to think even in the middle of the, the peak rut like we are right now, about a lot of strategy and, and to me the strategy comes down to stand management and certainly hunting during the weather and, and using the weather and we'll start with number one here hot days i i still hunt hot days but for example today it's going to be a high of 64 um, not a lot going but it's in the middle of the rut anything could happen but i need to get some stuff done we had some errands to make banking to do um, some payments to drop off different things we had to move some stuff into a storage unit uh, just to name a few things so it's an all day kind of uh Aaron day uh, for us. So I had a lot to do, so I took a day off. And I, but I'm not gonna take a day off on a cold day. Tomorrow, we're supposed to have chance of thunderstorms, 67 degrees. And now Dylan's here, I wanna get out in the stand at least morning or evening. We're gonna look at the best time, best winds uh, for where we wanna hunt and, and we'll make that choice. We're gonna be hunting during some hot weather. And so what does that mean? If you can, doesn't matter if you're public or private, I'd like to focus on water. If, I, if, if I'm hunting in hill country public land, I don't wanna hunt necessarily in those top of those hills where it's really dry. I wanna hunt where it's shaded, cooler, bottom valleys, and that means water. And you'll find a higher concentration of deer in those areas if you have the opportunity to hunt. Maybe that in flatland means more swamps where not only are, is there water, but there's more of a change in habitat. It's a lot of hunters right now. A lot of hunters have been in the woods, so there's more cover, it's thicker. There's more, higher stem count per acre, meaning brush, briars, weeds, grasses. That's where you find those bucks. So a lot of times where they'll go to in hot weather is also where you should be hunting anyways. 
um, in that thicker uh, shaded area that's more hidden. But at the same time, there's some strategy to go along with that. I'm also looking at that maybe those aren't my best stands. I'm hunting, so if I have a small property I'm hunting, if I have a small area on public land, I just have a handful of stands or potential stand locations if you're mobile on public land, then I'm gonna look at where can I have a smart hunt where I could hunt maybe near some water, shaded area, somewhere back away from the masses where I can picture a buck wanting to go even when it's hot and he's still gonna move around, he's still gonna rut but that might not necessarily be my best spot that I'm saving for cold weather. So think about that slant that say, oh, I still want a good stand, obviously, and you know, I want to be just out in the open woods somewhere, open hardwoods where I don't think a, a, a buck's gonna walk by, but at the same time, really slant, start to think about shade, water, thick stem count, and I think that'll point in the right direction even with hot weather. Now, cold front, this is key. I shoot most of my bucks on cold fronts. Uh, two mornings ago, on Monday morning, uh, third day of Minnesota gun season, I shot a really nice five-year-old that I've been after. And it was it was fun. I had, you know, Jen here to go down and help me out, but then also my daughter was here, my son Jackson. So I actually waited in the stand for them to come down uh, for about 45 minutes to an hour. I thought I heard him crash, but I wanted to go in there with the family. It's part of that event. I'm sure if Dylan was in the stand, I would have shot him too. And I had an opportunity at 45 earlier in the year. And it was completely up the draw about two thirds of a mile away. But when you have these setups, when the deer come in, they come in where we want them to. Jen actually shot a real nice buck out of that same setup. And uh, we, we planned this in the off season, that entire access road to get in there, water hole, bedding area. We talked about it, uh, rut bedding areas and how to hunt it earlier in the year and that setup. So a lot of uh, time and effort went into that. And this is one location and setup out of all of them. Cold front morning, toes were a little cold a little frosty and uh and that's when i love to hunt that's when i get into some of those really special areas um, but it still involved water because during the rut bucks love water we had a mock scrape outside of a bedding area it's morning so i'm going to be right on the outside edge of a bedding area we're playing the thermals in that case we're blowing our thermals up a draw as the temperature came up in the morning so we we're pretty safe on wind and so unlike the hot weather i'm looking at the, when we get those cold fronts i'm looking for definitely uh, the temp drops, that temp's gotta go down. I'm looking for calming conditions. It's really important, so calming conditions. What I mean by that, it doesn't mean that that the uh, winds are, have gone from 40 miles an hour to five. It means the winds have gone from 40 to 25 or 40 to 15. There's been a significant change. That means the thunder and lightning. We had literally had thunder and lightning the other day. It means the thunder and lightning has subsided. It's done. It means the heavy rain is done. I don't care if there's a little light rain, but I want these conditions to clear a little bit because all those major weather extreme factors press deer down. There's some studies out there. People talk about, well, that the weather doesn't influence deer movement and hogwash. How many deer have you seen out in a blizzard out in the middle of the field hurricane thunder lightning hail heavy snow heavy rain they don't move as much that's just common sense folks common sense so the weather obviously influences deer movement that means if the weather influences deer movement negatively then there's going to be the opposite effect and weather will influence movement favorably i look for the calming conditions on the back side of the front and in fact right now this video is coming out we're shooting this on a wednesday night you're going to see it on thursday morning and in our area which you know we're i'm not saying we're on the western fringe of whitetail area we're in southeast minnesota but i've worked in the dakotas i've worked all the way out to wyoming colorado for whitetail clients so there's a lot of whitetails out west obviously further than we are idaho lots of areas out there down all the way now to kansas but this is this is a little bit further than a lot of the deer numbers of people deer hunter numbers and so we're looking at a high of 67 on tomorrow when you're seeing this video today, when you look at this. But on Friday, we're dropping to 37 for a high. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we're in the 32 and 29 range for highs. Incredible. Incredible drop. And so while tomorrow might be decent, I suspect if Dylan and I are hunting in the afternoon, it's probably going to be in high winds. And if it is, we might be going down low somewhere so we can get out of the wind because that's where the white tails are going to going to go but you can bet we're going to go in to try to get into right into the heat of things right into the heart of our best spots and use that strategy um, during that cold front in our best stand locations number three you're going to need a lot of boring in uh, consistent weather 
where there's really not much going on. And you'll see that with the whitetails, they'll reflect that even during the rut, even during the peak of the rut. People will say, well, you get out there in the rut, anything could happen. Yeah, it can, but plan accordingly. Plan your best stands for cold front, your worst stands for the heat. Doesn't mean you're not hunting. And then when it's boring and consistent, chip around a little bit. That's almost like scouting time, meaning in-season scouting, not walking around the woods, but go sit in the stand, check for sign. Go sit in the stand, check for sign. That's when I really like to look at areas where I can get into, check areas where maybe I didn't think about that. I walk in, man, there's rubs and scrape everywhere. It's amazing. The older a buck gets, the more defined his home range becomes. Let me repeat that. The older a buck becomes, the more defined his home range becomes. We see that time and time again. That is not the case in big open wilderness, big open commercial forestry, federal land, state's land, state lands where there's tons of cover and big bucks move everywhere. It is the case when you have fragmented parcels. It could be that your parcels in your area are hundreds of acres. Most people don't have that luxury. Most people it's 40s, 80s, 160s, 200, 300 is a big piece and fragmented parcels. Meaning if a buck gets to four or five years old, even in the area where where hunters are looking for that older age, that means he's not gonna move very far. Think about it. If he moves a half mile this way, a mile this way, and back and forth, he just crossed 17 boundaries. And how many hunters go with those 17 boundaries? So how a buck moves in all the studies, the scientific studies on big properties, they don't do studies on small parcels and fragmented parcels. The home ranges of mature bucks get very, very defined. And what you find is as the season progresses, September and October, early November, and there's a lot of pressure applied, those home ranges become even smaller. So a stand off in a corner that's only supported by about 10 acres of cover might hold the oldest buck in the neighborhood because he gets pushed over there, he chooses to be there, he's reclusive, and that's how he becomes older every single year because he knows how to how to avoid property lines, avoid other hunters, and really hone in that area. And so those boring and consistent days or consistent days, that's where I'm looking at these kind of areas and really branching out on the property and checking this area, that area. Could do it on public land, private land, doesn't really matter. Should you hunt every day? Well, I took the day off and I can hunt every day. I've been taking a lot of mornings or evenings, slanting it towards if it's a boring and consistent day, then I might just hunt the evening or morning, even if I can hunt every day, I try to get work done. Today we took that day off, it was an errand day. I'm sure I'll take half a day off tomorrow. But when it gets into that cold weather, I'm hunting every day. When I'm hunting that backside, I like during the front sometimes, if it's not heavy rain, heavy snow, blizzard conditions, and we can get out of the wind. And you'll find a disproportionate number of whitetails out of the wind. They even move to get out of the wind. There's been some wind studies that show that deer move to get out of the wind during those times. So we'll look for those. Hunt every day? You know, you might have a nine day rut hunt. Sure, hunt every day, but plan accordingly. Again, apply some strategy. If you pound the same stand over and over again, to me, that first, uh, everyone says this, and I've seen this, you know, I would say that, um, let's say 60%, we'll just throw a number out there, to 70% of all my mature bucks have been shot using the stand the first or second time for the year. You look at something like that, there's some kind of stat. Use the second time decent opportunity but each time you use it the opportunity goes down now if you're spreading your sits over a three-month period I don't think the deer are none the wiser you know they don't that's that's not much of an impact but most people don't have the time to spread out and the number of stands to spread it out over three months and you hunt it four times most people have nine days they have a week they have a few weekends in a row and if you're pounding those same stands over and over again to me it's not only the stand that becomes a very poor choice to sit the quality, the potential of seeing deer in that area diminishes at that stand, but it has a ripple effect. The more you use one spot, the more it has a ripple. So imagine using the same stand over and over again in a 20 acre section. Pretty soon the 20 acres is blown out, not just a half acre around the stand because you pound it over and over and over again. So think about that. So hunting every day, go here, go there, use it as a time to opportunity and, and check out those other areas, see where a mature buck set up shop. But if you're hunting the same stand every day, you're gonna expect that diminishing return. The difference, public land. You find those big rut funnels, big movement, different where it's property fragmented, deer move small. When it's unfragmented and deer can roam for miles without running into another hunter, they move. And they look for does and typically there's lower deer numbers on public land. So they have to go a long ways to find this doe group, this doe group, meaning three does, maybe a mature doe, a yearling doe, and one fawn. 
in the case of the UP and Michigan, you know, northern areas where there's a lot of winter kill, they'll move a long ways. So that means if you're on public land, it could be that you're on public land in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, some of these big giant public land tracks up in the northeast or over to the west, that deer might move a long ways. That means you sit on a rut funnel, and as long as you're maintaining a low amount of scent left behind, like we use a limit shield, we, we want to leave no tracks left behind, no scent left behind when we're going in and out. And that's why that's primarily why I use a, a cover-up scent because I don't want to leave a lot of scent. I don't believe that mature bucks 50 yards away, my scent blowing at it, I'm probably in trouble. Mature does, whatever it might be. But on public land, you're managing that rut funnel. You might have a stand on either side for different winds. You might be able to pound that because the buck you're shooting might be two miles away when you enter it. Or when you exit it a little bit different story the best days what are those best days we talk about that front going through so you look at hey it's a great day and i'll see it on social media right now people sitting all day in the same stand should you do that i talk about around here 10 15 percent of our stands are good for all day sits meaning they're in that perfect x of movement between bedding and food and it might be that we have here's that x of movement we have bedding 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 and food over here and then this is a big no deer area whether it's open hardwoods a swamp a marsh a horse pasture the corner inside corner of a field where i don't expect movement so i get an area like that well i could have deer coming from food in the morning going back to food coming from all different directions going in that that's a good all-day stand but if i'm back here on the back side of bedding where i like to hunt mornings in the sense going this way or this bedding area in the sense going that way and my stand location right there well, I might have a great morning, but that turns into a dud stand in the afternoon as all the deer are going towards food and they're going away from my position. And that's why most of the time, even if it's a great day to sit all day, I'm hunting two different stands. I'm hunting different locations in the morning, evening, because I want to associate a food source stand in the evening, not sitting on food usually, but I want some kind of food related movement where the food is the bottom of the funnel of daylight movement, meaning all these areas are coming right to here. That's the bottom of the funnel right here to that daylight movement. They're all going towards food. I want to be somewhere on the way to that funnel. If you sit on the funnel, you could destroy the funnel. It doesn't even matter if it's a rut. All of a sudden, does aren't hanging around there. Young bucks, old bucks won't either. They know something's going on. But I'm looking at those stands in an all-day sit. So I'm looking at this weekend sitting mornings, evenings. Mornings, evening doesn't necessarily mean the same stand. I have one spot in Wisconsin that I wouldn't mind sitting all day because I can expect all day movement in that area but that's out of nine stand locations you know I might have one more that I could look at but I'm not seeing a lot of sign there right now so not not a very high percentage of time and what ends up happening and again it goes back to smart decisions making good use of those best days of weather and then really making smart decisions so you're not wasting opportunities Maybe you say, well, it's never a waste of time in the woods, especially during the rut. Anything could happen, but you can be a lot smarter than that. And I use the weather to guide me to success. That guides me to stand management. It guides me, it helps me guide me, helps guide me to be efficient with my time overall, whether it's taking a day with a family to run errands or actually spending all day in the woods or half a day in the woods. And it certainly determines what stands that I go sit in. If you like all this weather stuff and I've been using the weather to predict my sits since 1993, 92, somewhere around there. And I did so because I had to manage two weeks vacation off and a young family. So I just couldn't go leave whenever I wanted to and come back whenever I wanted to. I couldn't go for weeks at a time. I've hardly ever hunted for a week. I went to Saskatchewan a couple weeks ago, hunted for six, six days in a row. That's the second longest hunt I've ever had in my entire life, anywhere. Usually it's three, four days at the most, usually two or three days. I go, hunt the weather, get out of there. I've been doing that for decades because I didn't have a lot of vacation time. I had to manage my time off and make the best use of my time off. I worked on an algorithm a long time ago. I infused it into the HuntWise app, HuntCast it's called. I'm one of very few people that you can get 25% off. I like, I love being able to offer that to you guys. It's in the description of this video. If you click more right under the video on your, on your phone, you can find it real easy. Check that out. I encourage you. That's what guides me to success. And that's what really tells me. Do I go all in for a really good rut stand on a cold weather sit? Do I hunt all day? Or do I just chip around because it's a poor day? Those values are in there. If you don't want to take the time to learn this, they'll print it out for you. They have great mapping, great wind 
mapping for you through that app and I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. So many of you, I know a lot of you already have. So I appreciate you watching to the end of this. It's still the rut, it's a peak rut right now. That doesn't mean you make poor decisions. Keep using strategy, keep really trying to make smart decisions when you go in the woods and it'll pay off big time. Always remember, it doesn't matter if it's a deer season or the rut, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It really pays to be smart and it'll lead to success, not only this fall, this rut, but for all the ruts, all the hunting seasons that are yet to come. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.